Your applications can integrate with Adobe Acrobat Sign if you're part of an organization that has an Adobe Enterprise Acrobat Sign account. With REST API operations on the Swagger application, you can invoke a variety of operations directly, but also test out API functionality. In this demo, I will go over some of the navigation basics and cover working with Acrobat Sign REST API resources and operations from creating bearer access tokens to illustrating how you can create your own APIs using the example of sending a document using a transient ID. And one more time before we get into the demo, you will need to be part of an organization that has Adobe Acrobat Sign for Enterprise and be able to log in as an account admin. Let's hop in. Go to the Accounts tab. Then scroll to the bottom. Under the Acrobat Sign API, click API Information. Then on REST APIs Methods Documentation. This will bring us to the Acrobat Sign REST API Methods page. For this demo, I will be using REST API v6, but you can select other versions here. If we scroll down, we can see the Resources and Operations section. This is where we can invoke but also test various API operations directly. More on that in a bit. But for now, let me walk you through a few things. For each resource, there is a menu of operations. If we click on Show Hide, it will expand. If I click it again, it will collapse. OK, one more thing I want to point out. If we click on Transient Documents and then on Show Hide, this will reveal the category Post. Once we click on that, all of the parameters are revealed. Now that we're a little familiar with navigating, let's send a document using Transient ID. This will give you an idea of the flow and useful guides you can use to create your own APIs. To kick things off, let's start by creating a bearer access token. Here we can see the syntax for the bearer access token. And if we just wanted to test an API operation and we didn't have an integration key or an OAuth token, we can generate a temporary one. All we need to do is click here. This will give us a pop up window of the scopes for this OAuth token. For this example, we are going to select agreement underscore right. Now we have a drop down that gives us a few options. One has a suffix of self. This will execute an API operation for our own agreements. If we select group, this will expand it to the group level. And if we click on account, that will expand it to the whole enterprise account level. Let's select account. Perfect. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if we select the account level for one scope, we need to do that for any remaining scopes we want to enable. We need all of these enabled so once we change all of them, we can click Authorize. There is a chance you will be asked to log in. If so, just make sure to log in with the same account and allow certain permissions. Now we have a token with a prefix, Bearer. This is just what we need. One quick note though, these temporary tokens are only good for 60 minutes, so you will need to regenerate after it expires. Notice that there are helpful descriptions or syntax guides to the side of the value. If we wanted to add an XAPI user, here are some helpful hints. Same if we needed to create a value for behalf of user or other values. What if we want to upload a file? Well, we can go here and click on Choose File. With our file added, we can click on Try It Out. Our API call has been made. Here we can see a variety of things, but I want to point out two things. One is that we have a transient ID within the response body. The other is the response code. It's a 201 value, so everything ran smoothly. But if there was an error, we would see an error code in the response body. We have a transient document ID, but if we wanted to send an agreement using this ID? Well, first, we need to navigate to agreements. Here is where I'd like to point out that above parameters are some helpful implementation notes. In this case, we can see the various states a new agreement can be in. Let's set up our OAuth access token. And then, once the pop-up window displays, adjust the drop-down to agreement underscore write account. OK, it is looking good, and we can click Authorize. Now we have the new bearer token. And just like we saw before, we have helpful descriptions for each value and parameter. Let's work on adding a value to the agreement info section. If we go to the data type column for this section, notice we have an option to go to Model, Agreement Info. If we expand Agreement Info, we get a huge set of parameters. 
but more importantly, we can understand why these parameters are used and the appropriate values to use in our JSON body. If we scroll down, notice that we can continue expanding and exploring. This is a great start. But I have another thing to point out to you. If we go up and click on Minimal Model Schema, we can see the JSON body that will define the only mandatory parameters required to make this API call. We can just click on it, and it will automatically be copied to the agreement info value. Nice and easy. And if we need a little more room, we can expand this viewer just a bit. For this example of sending a document using Transient ID, we don't need anything more complex than the minimal model schema. But what if you want to go a bit more complex for your API? Well, if we go over here, we can click on Complete Model Schema. This will bring up the JSON body for all the parameters for customizing an agreement. And just like before, we can click on this viewer and it is automatically copied to the Agreement Info Value viewer. You can see that we have all the parameters listed if we scroll through this viewer. I'm going to keep it simple for now and switch back to the minimal model schema. Let's fill in the values for each of these JSON elements. One of the first bits of information we need to get is the transient document ID. All we need to do is scroll up and copy it here. Now that we have that, we just paste it into the JSON body. It needs a name, so we just type one out. We also need to give the role of the person. In this case, let's make them the signer. And remember, if you're unsure about what options you have, just hop over to the model and look up the options. There are a bunch, so take your time and pretty soon, they'll come naturally. Another bit of information we need to fill in is the email. For signature type, we can dig back into our helpful guide and see that there are two options we can select from. Once we fill in the correct option, we can work on filling out the state within the JSON body. We know this information from the implementation notes above. One thing that might save you some time is just to copy the state so you can get it exactly right. Just watch out to make sure you don't accidentally include spaces or segments of other words. Everything is filled in, so it's time to try it out. Perfect. We have the request URL. And here is where we can find the agreement ID. Our response code is 201 because it was successful. If not, an error message would have shown up. Now that you have a sense of how this API process works, think about all the other steps in the process you can do. For example, try out sending agreements from a library document. Or try out creating signing URLs. Or getting combined documents with audit reports or polling data from a document. Thanks for following along with me. This video is really just to get you started on the path of creating REST APIs. Check out the links and information on this page to learn more about the possibilities for your workflows.